For years, FC Barcelona has been known for their insane midfield talents, but over the past few seasons, despite young talent coming from nowhere, the midfield ranks has been left bearing, with no signings to cover up our constantly injured stars. And going into this season, well, it looks like it wasn't going to be any different. The number one priority for most Barcelona fans for the past several years was a pivot, someone to help replace Busquets and cover the defensive midfield pocket that had been vacant under Xavi, one of the main reasons that side struggled so much last year. And so there were a few names put out there. Zuba Mendy from La Real, a few others. These guys all offered a bit of what Barcelona's legendary number five once had, but for whatever reason, Jean Laporta didn't have the facilities to get that over the line. They had the money for some players, but just didn't want to sign a pivot for some reason reason. So backtracking to the first game of the season, our starting midfielders were Marc Casado, a 21 year old from La Masia who didn't have a ton of expectations on his shoulders, was kind of looked at as Sergio Roberto 2.0, and Marc Bernal, a 17 year old who had a lot of expectations around him, was expected to be kind of Sergio Busquets 2.0 for a very long time. He was that good. Bernal had the size, the athletic ability, and the footballing intelligence to occupy that role when the team needed him most under Hansi Flick in this side, and he looked to be able to do it immediate. I think from the start, it looked like he could do everything that we would have expected some of those younger guys that we would have signed for tens of millions of euros over the summer to do. So from the very start of the season, Mark Bernal was the guy that Hansi Flick trusted the most. He was going to get the most playing time in that pivot position, and it made sense. There honestly just weren't that many options because of the injuries to Gavi, Pedri, Frankie de Jong, and then Christensen with Eric Garcia backing him up and really being the only guy that could, in theory, play that profile. But Bernal was incredibly special in the those first few matches incredibly exciting doing all the things that we've been asking from a player to do and he did it at just 17 years old that really wasn't that much of a surprise for the guys that actually watch Bernal in La Masia that follow La Masia closely everyone knew Mark Bernal was really good there was a lot of excitement around his name he had the size at the time but he just had the ability he had more ex expectations than Pau Prim an older version of a CDM in front of him in La Masia and so it was only a matter of time for him to join but would he be able to do it at 17 years old because that's a little bit optimistic even if Kubarsi and Lamine had been able to do it before but man with that size and profile it's pretty easy to make those comparisons to Busquets and I understand why they did it as well, but he was more than that. Bernal apparently scored 280 goals in 281 appearances throughout his ranks in La Masia. That's an incredible mark for a guy who was supposedly touted as the next Busquets, and that's because he was a lot more than just a pivot. He has a great shot on him, one we saw in the first few matches, but that's not what we needed from him. We had guys who could score, or who could create, and so we needed a body back there that could win balls back and maintain possession and help build up play. And Mark Bernal could do that just about as well as anyone else in this side at the time, if not better than anyone we have seen for a very long time. With the likes of Bernal able to sit back while Fermin, Daniel Moore, Pedri could push forward and be that creative energy, that creative block, well, it looked to make this team a lot more complete than it has for several years. And the gamble that Laporta took in not buying a midfielder despite what everyone was saying, it looked like it paid off. That is, until three games into the season when against Rayo, Bernal went out with an AC L injury said to miss the entire season, which left the midfield, that midfield that had finally found a little bit of excitement, a little bit of momentum, looking just as barren as it was before. And even with the, all these guys out, it wasn't looking very good for this side. And that injury is a big deal for him. And everybody hopes that he comes back soon healthy. And with the help of Gavi, who just literally went through the exact same injury and the recovery process a year ago and is still going through it now, he should have a good amount of guys around him to build him back, help him get back to full form. So I'm not too worried about him, but I was worried worried about this side. And this is precisely where Casado stepped up like no one could have possibly expected and changed the game for Barcelona and potentially the entire season for this side. So Casado has come in and been fantastic, so much better than anyone could have expected with the balls he is playing, with the intensity that he has. He is so much more than just a Sergi Roberto 2.0 because he has an ability all over the pitch when Sergi was really at his best going forward and even there 
no one's giving him too many accolades for that. He might not have the build of Bernal or the long shot either, but he has so many aspects to his game that can really help this side. He's got a little bit of that fiery intensity that we've seen from Gavi and Firmin in the past, and that's really been something this team could rely on, especially with the high press that Hansi's Flick's football needs. But before we answer the question really why I think this is allowed to happen, let's look a little bit more rationally at football here. A lot of good games are coming up, a lot of things are exciting for us fans, and it's kind of upset that people are complaining like this and it's going crazy, but we're going to try to go to matches, right? And we're going to try to make it happen. That means getting on flights, going to new places and potentially logging into unknown Wi-Fi networks, which is where today's sponsor NordVPN comes in. Say you want to fly to Barcelona. Well, on your way there, you're going to have to log into some sketchy plain Wi-Fi where there could be people waiting to pull your information from your account. But NordVPN can protect you from that. And when you're going to the match, maybe you're checking your plane information prior to, well, you also want to make sure that all of that very personal data is not being leaked onto the dark web. And NordVPN's dark web scanner can protect you from that and make sure none of your most important information is there. But for those of you fans like me that can't always get to the matches, well, there are ways that NordVPN can help you there because a lot of beautiful places in Europe, like Ireland, baby, well, they let you watch matches for free. So all you have to do is use NordVPN to put yourself in Ireland and you can watch those matches perfectly legally with the help of NordVPN. But that's really just the beginning of the things that you can get to, the footballing beauty that you can get to with the help of NordVPN. So to help me out and more importantly, help yourself out, go to nordvpn.com slash Robbie Lou and get a special offer and try it risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you again to Nord for sponsoring this video, helping us football fans play football, watch football, and love football more, and back to Marc Casado. In Barca's match against Hatafe, the Catalan side managed to keep their opponents to only 90 passes, and without Casado, who knows if that would have been possible, because he's constantly running for 90 minutes, putting it on pressure, and making it difficult for the other team to operate and that's something this team desperately required. Not to mention his ability to maintain possession in the tightest of positions and push this team forward while he's at it. Okay, I wanna make it clear. He's not the most complete player I've ever seen just because he does a little bit of what Gavi and Pedri do and Busquets and Bernal were gonna do as well. Because he isn't. He isn't a perfect player, but he looks much more experienced than his age when he comes on the pitch and he can run just as good as anybody else out there. But the most remarkable part about this kid's rise to me is that no one really expected it. They knew he was okay, they knew he had some options, but coming out of La Masia, well, there weren't very many expectations on this kid's head. Last season, when Xavi was struggling, trying to figure out what to do with the double pivot after Frankie and Gavi went out injured, he basically ignored the midfielders from La Masia that could play there, especially Casaro, even though he was 20 years old, which is older, I remind you, than Balde, Lamine, Kubarsi, Gavi, Pedri, all were on Sufati when they made their debuts for Barcelona and made major impacts for the side. He was older than them and still not expected to really help this team at all from Xavi. Instead, he chose to look elsewhere and try to convert center backs Christensen and Eric Garcia into defensive midfielders, which never really worked. Sure, they were okay at times, but not great. They never were that convincing. And then there was Sergio Roberto there to take minutes in that same position when Gundogan wasn't convincing either. It was far from a clear-cut strategy from Xavi and, you know, some talented La Masia players would have been nice to fix that, so it's clear he didn't think much of Casado at the time. But it's Sergio Roberto that I think most players expected Casado to be like. A lot of people were even questioning if Sergio Roberto should leave this season because they didn't think they would be able to replace him, right? They didn't ha think they'd have the depth in the middle to cover the positions that he played, and Casado, well, people didn't think very highly of him. Mark was always decent in La Masia, but he was never insanely special. He was never playing years above his age bracket, and so it was easy to underestimate him. And honestly, I did too. I didn't think very highly of him, even from the moments that I saw of him. I didn't think he was that special, but giving him the moments to play now under Hansi Flick, he looks incredible. This kid made his debut for Xavi in 2022, but has barely shown face for this side since So then. I don't think anyone really expected him to take up nearly as much of a role as he has so far this season. It's truly a miracle that guys like this are spawning at the times that Barcelona really needs it the most. Sure, it's not ideal, but when Iniesta went out a few years later, well, we cooked up a guy named Pedri. Rakitic left because he was too old. A few years later, we get Gavi. Alba's getting oh, a little old. Here comes Balde. Piquet leaves. There's Kubarsi. And 
Casado is here when everybody is injured, nobody is around, and he's ready to fight and do the job wherever and whatever is asked from him. Sometimes he's able to move the ball like Pedri. He has a little bit of that La Pausa. He can manage the ball and move it forward in a very intelligent way to keep possession and keep this side going forward in a way that maybe Fermin doesn't even have at this time. He looks incredibly good on the ball a lot. That's not to say he's as good as Petri in that space, and it's not to say he's as intense or as ball-winning as Gavi is, but he has a little bit of all of this, and that makes him so important. Every so often, he can make a great long pass as well, pushing the team forward, creating a you know an assist to an assist, something like that to push this team forward to help them create more goals, even though they don't really need any help with that right now. And that is so valuable in a midfielder to be able to do all of these positions, to be able to be the deepest midfielder, and then later in the game, move forward when you bring in Eric Garcia to support the back line, to hold up a win, and be that creative role a little bit in the middle as well. To manage all of those responsibilities and do it as well as Casado has done Done for 90 minutes every match is invaluable, especially when nobody really expected much from him. Frankie, Gavi, Fermin, and now Mark Renault all went out injured. The guys that Hansi Flick could probably have used to rely upon in the middle, all of these guys, mostly with experience, with the exception of Bernal. So he had to go to what is fifth choice, and his fifth choice is looking insane. Easily a 30, 40 million euro midfielder if you were in the Premier League. This guy is so fun to watch and he's exciting and he does it right. And people just thought he was Sergio Roberto 2.0, but he's so much more than that. I'm really excited to see what Casado brings to this side because he's very good at football and he's fun to watch and he offers so much depth that who knows, he might even displace some of these guys coming back from injury when they are available because he's playing that well, he's that reliable, and to have more depth in the middle, something we haven't had in years, can see this side perform pretty well in multiple competitions, something the team hasn't done in a long, long time. So I'm excited to see this miracle of Marc Casado continue playing football, continue crushing it for the side, and help this side win more games.